It's officially the end of the Laura Croft era of the Tomb Raider series, and that sounds crazy to say, but I think that is the case with a lot of the new developments around the Netflix TV show, and of course the other video games and TV shows in development at Amazon Studios and Crystal Dynamics because it becomes increasingly obvious after you watch the Netflix show that the story of the Tomb Raider and Laura Croft is not about the classic Laura Croft that we all love. It's now about pandering to a political aligned group of people that have now took control over this IP and franchise. And we've seen this happen to a multitude of other properties like Star Wars, Marvel, Warhammer, Star Trek, all these properties have been taken over by political factions that have their own ideology that they want to put in place and influence the masses of people that actually play these games. And this is what we're seeing with Laura Croft finally in full display. Of course, people say this happened in 2013, I would have to say, but there was still some restraint. But now with the Netflix adaptation of Laura Croft, gone is the daring and adventurous and cool, calm and cruel collective Laura Croft that we've seen in all the classic iterations from Tomb Raider 1 through three to four to five and six and this is the situation that we're seeing now where this version of Laura Croft that we see in these cinematics doesn't exist anymore so crying weeping overall gender oriented version of Laura Croft that is wholly uninteresting even though we have all the action scenes that we would expect from a Laura Croft animation and I think that is the crazy thing I see here with this new adaptation from Netflix where it just seems to be pandering to a small politically aligned audience that really does even care about this IP or franchise and you can see this in the reflection of the people that they brought in to actually produce this product where it's people that are steeped in modern day politics that want to take these original IPs that have influence in society since they can't create anything of their own and they want to just inject their ideas and philosophies regardless if they're congruent with the properties that they take in control of and you can see this with some of the sayings from the showrunner who says they just want to update it for a modern audience focused on little girls that want to aspire to be Tomb Raiders which doesn't even make sense because the main audience for Tomb Raider are usually adult males and women that like these video games which were notoriously known to be difficult so her coming in and talk about little girls like little girls they never played Tomb Raider what are you talking about and little girls are not the main audience for a Tomb Raider franchise and this is just showing that they want to realign this into a new audience and they want to give a big F you to the old audience of the Tomb Raider franchise and I think that is the illicit thing that we see from a lot of the creators of this show where they're just trying to snatch this IP and make it something into their own and them mention it they want to make this show for little girls I'm like with all these LGBTQ innuendos within the show it doesn't seem like it was made for little girls it seems like it was made for the writer who has their own preference and they want to display it proudly without regard to the story or the character elements that are in line with the Tomb Raider franchise and I think this is what we always see within these franchises that are co-opted by these political aligned philosophies where they say they want to make something for the fans but in actuality they want to make something for themselves and this is the predominant focus that we see in Hollywood nowadays where it's not about the customer base or the fan base it's about making something that is a front to the fan base and making something that is pleasing to your yourself and maybe a small core audience of your friends around you and that is just not a profitable model to follow if you're making a tv show for 10 people in west hollywood in los angeles california that is not a winning franchise method to actually make something that is consistent and actually brings a profit especially to a corporation like netflix that is highly focused on profits and is willing to cancel shows if they don't meet up to their standards and i think that's the situation that we're seeing with this reinvention of Laura Croft where we just get an uninteresting ugly designed character that is wholly made for the lesbian gaze and I think that is the main focus of the entirety of the show where it's just trying to show this version of Laura Croft that is an extreme lesbian that is completely enamored in her own gender politics and this is reflected in the fan base where the fan base is just out there trying to push this to the audience as well and this small minute fan base is becoming the larger fan base for this show where the writers and directors are trying to make this smaller fan base 
the predominant fan base of Tomb Raider. And I think this is just not the way you make a show that is directed to a larger audience that have stayed dedicated to this franchise for years, waiting for content, waiting for something of value to come with this show. And just seeing this be perverted into someone else's ideology is just not what the fan base actually wants. And that's why you're seeing that negative reaction from the main fan base. And me specifically, I'm just tired of seeing male black characters turn into gay black characters. This is what specifically happens with Laura Croft Tomb Raider, where where it's this trope that you always see with these LGBTQ focused writers where they take these masculinized male black characters and make them hyper flamboyantly gay. And this is a situation we see here with Tomb Raider and Zip where he's supposed to be a cool guy that worked with Laura Croft and had his own banter with her and had an attraction to her. And now that is being removed to fall in line with the industry standard of a masculization of a lot of black male characters within these franchises. This is falling in the tropes where I'm like they really are doing the typical tropes with all these characters all in one show. And regardless of that people are still complaining about the design of Laura Croft where yeah she has muscles that I, I can understand them trying to do that but uh, the whole package of their whole character profile where she's an emotional loser that is just swinging around with her gender insecurities and that is just the main focus of the show it doesn't feel like Tomb Raider even though the action is there and the voice actress is really well selected it just doesn't feel like the Tomb Raider that we actually grew up and loved and I think that is the result that we're seeing now where people are going like what is this version of Tomb Raider this is not the Tomb Raider we actually enjoyed and we could actually have a better realistic design of this Laura Croft we can just look at Hayley Atwell the, the voice actress she looks more like Tomb Raider in real life than the Tomb Raider in the Netflix special and I think that's just a sad state of affairs where we have real people that are looking like Laura Croft and, and that is being ignored to placate an audience of people that just simply don't care about the Tomb Raider franchise and just want to see something that is representative of their queer ideology within any franchise that used to be a male dominated franchise and it seems like this is some sort of psychotic form of revenge that we're seeing from these people that are supporting the transformation of these franchises where they just want to pull everything away that had a massive male focus audience and want to pervert that audience or just destroy that audience and make it a predominantly minority focused audience at least minority gender wise and they want to destroy anything that a male has an interest in within these franchises and we see this happening consistently with a multitude of franchises across the board where we have these franchises are being swept up and taken up into this ladder of destroying them and in placing in part some sort of female lgbq centered character and it's just annoying to see this as a person that's it's just a fan of these characters in general it just seems annoying where it's just okay we had the prototypical very strong female character for over 20 years and it seems like that is not enough for you she has to be an extreme lesbian that's focused on white guilt politics and all this other nonsense that has nothing to do with tomb raider and i think that's the thing i loved about tomb raider one through three because laura croft was extremely cruel and unrepentant of stealing all these artifacts i like that part of her where she's killing tribes people she doesn't care or what tribe you're from she's just doing what she does if you get in her way if you're violent towards her she's going to treat you equally as bad she's not going to think about oh uh, am i doing this to indigenous people no i want to see that laura croft that has that kind of moral gray area where she's just self-centered and really focused on herself but of course that can exist she has to be emotional unhinged and unstable and i think that is not the laura croft i want to see i want to see the cool one that is aesthetically pleasing flipping around and can handle anyone in any situation and i think that would be the laura croft that little girls actually want to see the one that is cool unemotional and engaging and just showing a different side of, of femininity and that is not the case that we're going to see anymore we're just going to see the one that is an unhinged social progressive idiot and i think that's the one we're seeing with netflix so it feels like this is the end of laura croft and rightly so because we're gonna see more products from the studio amazon studios crystal dynamics this is the direction they want to go making a unified version of laura croft that is in line with the, the recent sony ps4 and ps5 versions that we have been seeing for the past 10 years where 
even though I enjoyed some of these games, it's not the ideal Laura Croft. It's not the Laura Croft I want to see further in the future. It was a fun side quest almost to play as this version, but I want to get back to the real one that I actually like playing as. But of course, we're going to continue on with this Netflix version, and this is the version that is going to lead to the overall destruction of Tomb Raider and the Laura Croft franchise. I don't think we're going to see the classic Croft anytime soon besides the remasters that have been announced and i'm hoping they're keeping the same team from the first remaster one through three so i'm looking forward to play that and streaming that i love these games so hopefully we get to see a high quality product as the, the old, older remasters and maybe this may be a signal to them that oh we want the remastered versions we don't want the netflix one and hopefully that may change their opinion on what they produce at least crystal dynamics amazon studios but we know amazon studios is absolutely terrible they probably gonna choose making the worst version of Laura Croft but they did cancel Phoebe Waller Bridge's version of Laura Croft so maybe they have some sense now hopefully but it's hard to say this might be the end of Laura Croft but hopefully we get a taste of uh, the old Laura Croft the remasters before we get a whole revamp with a new Laura Croft that none of us are probably gonna like but you leave your comments tell me what you think like comment share subscribe this wagon knows why catch you next time